I think that's probably the, the best part about going to a game like this because you're you have nothing to lose. You know, what do we have to lose? Nothing. Leave it out in the field and, and what happens happens. Twenty nine points. That's the spread this weekend between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. This is not only the largest spread against the Hawks since all the way back in 2000. It's also the largest spread in all of college football this weekend. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your number one source for Hawkeye sports. I'm your host, Michael Merrick, and today we'll be talking about everything you need to know before the kickoff. This week, the Hawkeyes take on the second ranked Ohio State Buckeyes, and boy, do they have their hands full this weekend. Not only is this Ohio State squad talked about as one of the best offenses in the NCAA this season, this may be one of the most talented teams in NCAA history. And while the Ohio State University is known for producing stars year in and year out, this team, however, has a little extra shine. Returning for the Buckeyes is Heisman favor and potential top three pick in the NFL draft, CJ Stroud. Stroud lit the college football world on fire a season ago, throwing for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns in just his first season as a starter. This includes an explosion in the Rose Bowl where he would set records for the most yards and most touchdowns thrown in Rose Bowl history. CJ has continued that production into this season as he currently sits atop the NCAA for the most passing touchdowns so far this season, despite playing one less game than some players. Through six games, Stroud has totaled 24 passing touchdowns, so that means for every one Spencer Petras touchdown we get, you see 12 from CJ Stroud. They've, they've had good quarterbacks, and, and you know, Stroud looks like he's 28 years old back there. He's a really good football player, just you know, total control, uh, you know, really talented, and that's you know, going to be another challenge. His mental side of the game, um, he really took that approach to be able to learn the game, stepping in for Justin Fields. The one thing he worked on to kind of better himself from last year is really – just his escapability. He's not known to run the ball. And I mean, fans around here, they want him to tuck and run a little bit more if he sees an open lane. But uh, CJ Shroud, he, he's really trying to force the ball down the field and get to the receivers and to the playmakers' hands. This isn't a team that is just carried by their quarterback, though. The Buckeyes have potentially one of the best receiver cores in history. Currently, the Buckeyes have arguably the best wide receiver duo in the nation with two top 20 receivers in yards per game in Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Abuka. And this isn't even including Jackson Smith and Jigba, who missed some of this season, most of this season so far due to injury. Last season, and Jigba set school records for most receiving yards and most receptions in a single season. On top of that, in the aforementioned Rose Bowl game last year, and Jigba would set a bowl game record for most receiving yards in a single game, tallying over 300 yards on the day, along with three touchdowns. It's clear that these wideouts could cause major trouble for the top-ranked Hawkeye defense. With Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Ibuka, it's still the same one-two punch and not really a lack of production. Like with uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s, um, I believe, three-touchdown game against Michigan State with uh, that over-the-shoulder catch that he made in the corner of the end zone, I believe Emeka Ibuka also had 100 yards that game, and it was sort of flying under the radar. Got my attention in the draft again when the receivers were getting drafted, and you hear the experts say, well, you know, they might have better ones back at, back in Columbus. I'm like, huh, I think we play these guys next year. <laughs> Great. So here we go. They're going to take their shots down the field. They have really good, talented receivers who can go up and make plays. They've been making plays all year, as I've seen on, on film. So, you know, it'll, it'll definitely be a challenge for us to, to kind of limit those plays that they try to make down the field. Iowa is going to need their offense to travel with them to Columbus if they want to win this game. But it does not appear that any major changes will be made. When asked about a potential quarterback change, offensive coordinator Brian Ferentz had this to say. What's the downside of going with Alex? You still got Spencer on the team. I mean, what, right. what would be the downside of giving him a shot? The downside of going to the, making a change of quarterback. What would be the upside? What's the upside? Are we serious? Now, I'm no Petrus hater, and in fact, I believe that he's been receiving way too much of the blame for the Hawks' lack of success on offense. But the numbers don't lie. Since Iowa was number two in the nation last season, and man, how times have changed, they've gone seven and seven. During this stretch, Petrus has a record of three and seven, with his only Power Five win coming a few weeks ago against Rutgers, a game in which the defense outscored the offense. Padilla, however, would go 4-0 in his time and put up nearly the same amount of points as Petrus did in double the time. Now, I'm not calling for anybody's job or looking for anybody to get benched here. All I am is wondering why there's a lack of change with an offense that is ranked at the bottom of the NCAA all year, wrong, all year long. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting different results. If you're a Hawkeye fan right now, 
you have to feel crazy watching this team week in and week out. Now let's bring in DITV sports reporter Max von Gries to try and lighten things up around here. Max, I detailed that incredible Buckeye offense earlier in the show. Can you walk us through some of the playmakers on the Ohio State defense? Well, Michael, I don't know if this will lighten things up too much, but luckily the Ohio State defense is not as loaded as this historic offense. Unfortunately, though, they still have some studs on defense. Watch out for Mike Hall on the defensive line and Tommy Eichenberg at linebacker. Hall leads the Big Ten in sacks per game, and Eichenberg currently sits at six in the Big Ten for tackles per game. Also look out for their secondary. This is a safety-heavy defense, which is new for Ohio State, as they are usually more known for their cornerbacks in the past. But Ronnie Hickman and Lathan Ransom lead a tough secondary, and each of them have snagged an interception so far this season. So sadly, Michael, Iowa won't have a cupcake defense to try and figure things out against. Well, Max, who knows how things will go. Even when Iowa did play in FCS school, they couldn't score a touchdown, so Saturday could be a long one. But Iowa does tend to play the role of underdog better than anyone else. The last two times Iowa was near 20-point underdogs, they would end up winning both of those games. Back in 2016, they took down Michigan State 14-13 to in a game where the Hawkeyes threw for just 66 yards, so that has to give you some hope for this weekend. And of course, the last time they faced off against the Buckeyes, they would trounce Ohio State, winning 55-24, to so all hope is not totally lost. Now let's go to the newsroom and bring in Daily Iowan pregame editor Austin Hansen. Austin, we've talked about some of Ohio State's biggest weapons, but we haven't touched on their backfield quite yet. Can you, can you detail how dangerous the Buckeye backs are? Absolutely. I, I think people really have been overemphasizing Ohio State's passing game a little bit, attributing all the success of the offense to them. But as everybody knows, you can't pass successfully without a solid run game. Ohio State's got a one-two punch out of the backfield in Trevion Henderson and Mayan Williams. Um, and those pair, that pair has opened up a lot of things in the passing game for C.J. Stroud. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a breakout performance this weekend against Iowa's defense. Last week against Illinois, Iowa surrendered 200 yards rushing. Weekend before that against Michigan, they surrendered over 170 yards rushing. So expect big things from Ohio State's backs this week. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go away from the pass a little bit more than normal um, and focus on the run more than we've seen. Man, it just seems like the rich are getting richer there in Columbus, Austin. But this game is a real strength on strength matchup. We've talked about the prolific Ohio State offense and they're going up against the stellar Hawkeye defense. This game can also be viewed as a weakness versus weakness type of game though when discussing Iowa's poorest offense against the Buckeye defense. Austin, what do you expect to see out of Iowa's offense this week? Well, I don't know if nothing is an acceptable answer, but I think nothing is the way I'm going to go this weekend. Um, no personnel changes have been made, as you touched on earlier. Uh, Brian Ferentz is still here at offensive coordinator. Spencer Petras is still going to start. That guy's indestructible. He'll probably be out there for every single play. Um, so I expect more of the same. Ohio State's defense is ranked inside the top five in the nation. Uh, in total defense this year, and, and I don't see any way Iowa really moves the ball. I mean, this could be a situation where the under still hits in this game, but Ohio State still scores, you know, enough points to cover the 29.5 or 30.5 point spread that some sports books have out there this week. Yeah, and you know, we're all going to see firsthand how that plays out as me, you, and Max are all heading to Columbus on Saturday. But Austin, I've delayed this part as long as I can, but ultimately the time has come. Who do you have winning this game, and how do you see it playing out? I have a very specific scenario for this week. I picked in our weekly wager segment, um, I picked the under of 49 and a half to hit, and I picked Ohio State to cover minus 29 and a half. Um, so for that situation to happen, uh, I could see something like 49 to zero. I could see uh, 39 10, something like that. Um, I suspect that uh, Ohio State's going to win big this week, and I, I think I'm not alone in that prediction. Yeah, sadly, I'm right there with you taking the Ohio State University as well. I just think our offense won't be able to keep up with them. I got it 38 to 6 Buckeyes, and they take this one with ease. But thank you, Austin, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Before the Kickoff. Be sure to check out the Daily Iowan YouTube page and website for Hawkeye content posted throughout the week. From the University of Iowa, I'm Michael Merrick. Have a wonderful weekend of football, everyone.